Hello everyone, I'm Chugga Conroy speaking for Game Explain, and I've recently had the opportunity to play Xenoblade Chronicles 2 thanks to their help. While Derek is handling the review coming out in a few weeks, he asked me to cover the preview since he's, what else, still busy with Pokemon Ultras on Ultra Moon. I've already spent about 25 hours in the world of Allrest, and wanted to provide an idea of what I think the game is like so far. Don't worry though, there will be no plot spoilers in this video. I dislike media coverage doing that just as much as the next guy. And in doing so, let's get the expected parts out of the way first. To absolutely no one's surprise, the music and exploration are utterly fantastic. <laughs> When it comes to exploring, I do feel like some early areas are a bit linear, but it isn't that long before you're going to be running around big open green fields of awesomeness and it starts to feel like Xenoblade again. It's possible that Monolith is trying to ease players into this huge world rather than dropping them in the middle of it right away, and I do think the game does a good job with tutorials and with explaining itself, so it gets going pretty quickly, don't worry about that. And speaking of easing into new things, I want to cover the gameplay since I'm sure many of you are curious as to how it holds up and compares. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 works a little bit like a mix of traditional Xenoblade with Persona. Battles are real time and regular attacks happen automatically of course so that you can focus on using special attacks or arts, as well as positioning your character to give them the advantage. However, unlike past games, moving around actually prevents your character from performing those auto attacks. You need to get yourself in position and plant your feet before you start attacking. While you can use an art while in motion, it does more damage if used as part of your auto attack chain, and timing it just as your combo finishes will make it hit a lot harder. It's all about chaining attacks together. But the big new addition, and why I compared this to Persona, are spirit imbued weapons known as blades. Up to three blades may be equipped at a time per character, and strategy comes in the form of choosing blades that work well together and switching between them in real time to take advantage of the situation. It allows the player to have multiple sets of arts and possibly string them together for combos. For instance, you might need to auto attack enough to use one art that then in turn sets up for another art on another weapon to do huge amounts of damage. Unfortunately, the process can come off a bit slow at first, and I hate to say that because new mechanics are gradually introduced and it's a very new way of thinking about battles. I get that it's done to ease players into this new way of thinking as well as not overwhelming newcomers. Early on, I felt like I wasn't getting to do much in battles and that they were going on a bit too long. But that being said, after a little while, after I got the hang of it, and after I was introduced to a few different mechanics through the tutorials, I felt it offered the most action-packed and satisfying battles the series had seen yet. It's a good compromise between the first game's battle systems while still adding new things and giving a lot of room for learning and experimentation. It's very satisfying once you get the hang of it, and even though it does take a little while to get good, I'm glad that it's the way it is. On the note of experimentation, however, Character customization is immense, and I feel like even now, there's still tons of ideas that I haven't tried in customizing my moveset and equipping different blades. Thankfully, it isn't overwhelming, since equipment is not that big of a focus, and the customization is mainly about developing your own style of fighting than simply beefing up a bunch of numbers. I'm actually glad for it, though. I know that some people are going to be less than thrilled that equipment has been simplified a lot, but... I feel like this way, my decisions translate into tangible things in front of me, rather than just, well, bigger numbers popping out of the enemy when I hit them. That's about it in the way of battles, but it wouldn't be a Xenoblade game without a zillion side quests to do, and that's definitely accounted for here. The quest log is the best it's ever been, at least to me. If you didn't like the quest log in Xenoblade Chronicles X, and let's be honest, none of us did because of how vague it was, don't worry about that. This time, it tells you exactly where to go, the map system is great, and it's as helpful or vague as you want it to be thanks to navigation settings the game provides. Quests even have pictures and cover photos in the menus to make it easier to remember which NPC was doing what if you haven't made progress in a while. I'm happy to say that not once have I ever been lost on what a quest wanted for me, and any challenge of doing a side quest came from the actual difficulty of doing what it wanted. That's all I want to cover in the way of gameplay, so now moving on to the story and characters. And as I promised, I'm not going into any plot details here. I'm just going to say that, yes, I like both the story and the characters from what I've seen so far, but it took a little time before I felt that way. I wouldn't say by any means that it takes 20 hours to get good like some RPGs do. It gets going soon enough, just not instantaneously. 
Honestly, I feel like I'm saying that about a lot of things here today, but seriously, the cutscenes do end up having a lot of heart. The trademark Xenoblade humor is still there, which I'm very glad for, and I like the characters and their interactions. This is also a standalone story that can be enjoyed independently from the other games in the series, so much like Final Fantasy, the only thing you would miss out on are small references to the past games. Presentation-wise, I know a lot of people were turned off by the anime style, but it's something I feel you get used to. Honestly, from the moment this was announced, I was happy that they just went all the way with a visual style, rather than going the direction that X went, where that was a halfway middle ground between anime and realism. I at least prefer it visually over X, if nothing else. The scenes are well directed, they have good action, and are easily the most expressive cutscenes that we've had yet. It honestly reminds me a little bit about how Wind Waker style was received at first, versus how people felt about it after a little while. I think the same thing applies here, because everything is very well animated, very expressive, and only time will tell, but I think it's going to age pretty nicely as a result of that. There's still a ton more that can be said about Xenoblade Chronicles 2, but I'd be here for an hour, or, knowing me, a hundred of them. <laughs> this is just a short piece on what I feel about it now, and in short, the things I wasn't too sure about at first wound up surprising me after a little time passed, even if it did feel slow at first glance. It's definitely a game that allows the player to keep learning new things about the gameplay long into the adventure and rewards you for trying new ideas. And yes, I found myself turning on the game just to hear the music a couple times already. Once again, this has been Chugga Conroy. Thanks for watching, and be sure to tune into Game Explained for more on Xenoblade Chronicles and other things gaming as well. Thank you. Bye.